Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to The Book Nook. I'm going to be fucked to do makeup properly today and I don't really know what I'm doing anyway, so you get my unadulterated face, you lucky things! I am in a really weird mood today and I'm just going with it, I'm just going with it. I know why it is, I'm super excited because I'm getting to see my best mate and my godson today and I'm so excited, I'm so excited. How are you all? I'm good, thank you for asking. You didn't, nobody cares, okay! I told you, I'm in a weird mood. I've had like six coffees today, I need to calm down. So first up I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who did watch any or all of my Norsevember videos, as I said. In my final Norsevember videos I had real fun doing them and spending the month kind of digging into something that I'm really interested in and I think one of the things that I really got out of it was doing sort of some of the research for some of the videos. I remembered how much I kind of really like researching and digging into things and finding out all different sources and reading more information. It, it kind of sparked back to life the bit of me that when I was a student I really loved writing essays and doing the research which I know you know, not everybody does, but I really, really enjoyed that and I kind of really miss it. If you didn't, no worries, you know, it's not for everybody. It's cool. Oh, it's cool. If you fancy giving them a watch, they're, they're still up there. There's still a whole playlist. Knock yourselves out. But for today, I thought I would do just a quick little catch up and a haul video. You know how I love a haul of all the things I kind of bought over November because that always happens. I'd been thinking about attempting definitely not a full blown everyday vlogmas. I definitely haven't got the mental capacity for that but I've been considering trying to do something kind of a little bit more structured for vlogmas maybe you know committing to two or three videos a week but you know what I'm back in work now shops are back open I'm four days a week I'm looking after my godson one day a week I am still getting my stamina up remembering how to like do all all of the stuff that people do that I haven't had to do for definitely for lockdown but also for the last couple of years I'm remembering how to people to use a sickening terms that, you know, I'm a full-grown adult, why would I... So I think committing to something that structured is just not for me, so we will see how December goes, I will try and do something Christmassy. Also because I've just been struggling to get Christmassy this year, I mean I don't know what it is, I don't know whether it's because of the lockdowns or the shit show that's been 2020 that it kind of just feels anticlimactic, I don't know whether it's because, you know, I'm just growing out of Christmas, I think I have been growing out of Christmas a little bit the last five years anyway, and then definitely since Dad died Christmas has just been a bit kind of like cool, whatever. Now that I have a young tiny human in my life, Christmas has the potential to be more exciting again. I think, you know, when you have kids around in your family or extended family or friends or what have you, Christmas kind of goes back to that excitable thing. But obviously not really been able to see him this year, not really sure how much I'm going to get to see him over Christmas, so Christmas is kind of meh. And normally by now, obviously working in a shop over November, you'd have the build up to Christmas, but we've been working in the shop with no customers, so... Yeah, I'm just struggling to get a bit Christmassy. We have done the tree and we've decorated downstairs, which was nice. We put some Christmas music on and tried our damnedest to get Christmassy, but I have got my box of decorations, sort of my decorations to decorate my room. But when I opened that box, I found that one of my thankfully dry snow globes had exploded in the box. So when I opened that box, I wasn't in the mood to go hoovering that out and dusting all the fake snow off of everything. So that's, that's, that's future Liv's problem. But I'm thinking what I probably may do is tomorrow afternoon in the lead up to the final stay at home cozy reading night, which I am, okay, I'm, 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 I'm grasshoppering, but never mind. I'm super excited to join in on that one because the first lot over, you know, full on long lockdown, I managed to join in with a few. The ones that Lauren's been hosting over sort of lockdown 2.0 have been clashing with my D and D, but we played D and D a different night this week, so I can actually join in this week, and I'm super, 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 super excited. And especially because it's going to be the last one now until a kind of Christmas cozy reading night, I'm yay. So I think what I will probably do tomorrow afternoon after I've done some shit that I gotta do is I will spend some time kind of decorating my my lounge, my library and probably my bedroom as well and try and get a bit more Christmassy pre cozy reading night. I'm not gonna bother doing a cozy reading night TBR, I often do and then I usually, I do usually stick to them in the main, I don't finish all the books that I choose for cozy reading night. Re reading, reading, cozy reading, reading. But my whole relationship with TBRs is constantly changing and I'm leaning more towards the fact that when I set myself a TBR it becomes kind of this monolith of guilt that I'm not reading those books or if I'm not in the mood for them. So I'm kind of, I think maybe that's going to be like a New Year's thing where I kind of move away from the TBR thing a little bit. I still like the idea of like themed reading and, and reading books that kind of go together quite well and I think that will happen naturally and organically but yeah I may be moving away from TBRs, who knows, I don't know, I'm just talking out my ass. My point is I'm not going to bother picking out a TBR 
for cozy reading night. I was thinking of doing a video of a cozy reading night for TBR and then I thought, no, no, TBR for cozy, you know what I mean. But I decided no, part of what I will do tomorrow when I'm redecorating my room and, and getting it all Christmassy, A, I've got to dust the shit out of all these shelves because that's been a while, so I can spend some time choosing some stuff that I want to sit and read, whether it's graphic novels, poetry, which I haven't really been reading for a while, some short stories I haven't been reading for a while, or whether I just want to pick one novel, sit and read it for three hours. But I'm just super excited to join in in Cozy Reading Night. Nobody says I have to do a TBR anyway. It ain't the rules. There are no rules. Anyway, I told you I was in a weird mood. Let's just do a super quick haul of the books that I bought over November. So I bought a few more Norse related books for Norse November because as I say, one of the fun things about Norse November was kind of this continual research and discovering things. And what I kept finding was every time I would do a video and I think I'd research that, then I would just randomly the next day kind of be picking up where I left off on the computer and I'd find something and I'd find something totally new and I'd be like, hey, God damn it, I could have put that in the video and be, oh, I'll just buy it anyway. So I did buy the Dictionary of Northern Mythology by Rudolf Simek, which was in one of the videos, which I will link to down below. This is a dictionary of Northern Mythology. It's kind of all the terms that are in all of the Norse myths and gives a sort of bit of, uh, what's the word, context, history. I mean, it's kind of what it says on the tin. I also bought a copy of Njal's Saga, which is one that when I did my first Norse reading list video talking about all the kind of Norse texts, I touched on the Icelandic sagas. And then again, I was doing more research discovered this was an edition that existed of one of the biggest sagas, which I didn't know when I was doing the video. Continually learning, every day's a school day. So picked up a copy of this one and I'm gonna put that on my Norse shelf. Also going on the Norse shelf, and it's one that I didn't mention in the last Norse November video, which was talking about runes and shit, but it is Runes by Martin Findle. And I didn't mention this one because I'd kind of seen this one when I was doing research, but I dismissed it because I thought it was one of the kind of esoteric witchy magicy rune books, and the only non-esoteric magic-y rune book that I could really find recommended was a 50 quid hardback. And I was like, nah. But then when I was kind of re-researching after I'd edited and uploaded the video, I realised that this one is not an esoteric witchy one. This is actually talking about the history of the runes. So I got it. Then I think I mentioned in one of the Norse member videos that I was getting a copy of Valkyrie, The Women of the Viking World by Johanna Katrin Fredericks daughter. And I'm really excited to read this one. Mentioned in the Norse non-fiction video that it is about women in the Viking world. I have also got on the way to me uh, Echoes of Valhalla and I've forgotten the author of that and I will put it here when I remember it and what have you, but that is a book that looks at all the kind of Norse uh, mythology influences through popular culture, so anything from like Marvel to Led Zepp and all of that and it just looks really cool. That's a little Christmas present to myself. I mean, like all of these aren't. Then a little while ago, the lovely folks over at Open Pen got in touch with me and asked if I would be wanting them to send me some of their pamphlets. And I said, oh yes, please, that's very kind, lovely. So they've sent me their copy of this one, which is You Ruin It When You Talk by Sarah Manville. This is a little novelette, little pamphlet, little tiny thing about sort of dating in the modern world. And I think, I'm saying I'm not gonna do a cozy reading TBR, but I think I probably will sit and read this one. So big thanks to Open Pen. Then a few that I acquired when my mates were sorting out some more books and getting rid of some more books. And I said, oh, let's have a little look. So I picked a few from there. First one is John Ronson's uh, The Psychopath Test. John Ronson, I'm not like a huge fan of, like I just find him a bit, I don't know. But I've heard really good things about this book. So I thought I would give it a read. What's the harm? Then this book, which is Bill Hicks, Love All the People, Letters, Lyrics, Routines. Bill Hicks is somebody, I don't think I've ever watched a Bill Hicks stand up routine or anything like that, but I know he's someone who's talked about as kind of like really incisive and great. I don't know whether he's fully problematic. I don't really know enough about Bill Hicks, but I thought I'd give it a read. Also from that part, a copy of Every Time I Find the Meaning of Life, They Change It by Daniel Klein. This is one that I think I've looked at over the years and thought about getting. And when it was in this stack of ones I was getting rid of, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll have it. I think it's a look at sort of philosophy and spirituality and like mindfulness and stuff and like various meanings of life. And I thought well, this can go on my stack of, of that kind of books and I can dip in and dip out. Then one which I'm really excited about and I'd never bloody heard of before until I, I don't know, I can't remember how I found this. I think it was some comment on Reddit or something. And that's Terry Pratchett's Strata. Now this is apparently published before Discworld and was kind of like, almost like a kind of first draft of Discworld, but more sci-fi-y. People who are bigger fans of Terry Pratchett probably knew all about this one, um, but I was just really excited and so it felt like a new Terry Pratchett book to me, even though it's like literally the first one written before Discworld, but I'm gonna give this a go, ring light. Mm. Oh, actually this one should have probably come off the back of the Norse ones, and that's Paul Anderson's The Broken Sword. Again, I mentioned it in Norse-related fiction reading list. It was out the same year as The Fellowship of the Ring, 
Some writers say it's better than The Fellowship of the Ring, not me, I'm not saying that, I haven't read it, I can't, I can't say. And it's kind of become a bit of an unappreciated uh, fantasy classic and it's got Norse running all the way through it, so that's my bag. Then a book by an author whose first novel, I don't, to be fair, I don't know whether it's their first novel or just the first translated into English, was being talked about quite a lot on Twitter a while ago and I was kind of tempted, but the subject matter was maybe a little bit too close to home for me at the moment. So I bought the second one, which is Long Live the Posthorn by Vigdis Hjorth. The first one was Will and Testament and it was all about sort of a family after someone's died and I was like, yeah, I'm not quite ready for that. But this is about someone whose colleague vanishes overnight and then she finds some kind of letter and ends up investigating through the Norwegian post system or something like that, but it just sounds the kind of writing, the writing style that's very much up my street. Then we have, well actually this is the first book that I bought in November. Don't know how it's ended up last because it went to the bottom of the stack because I stacked them up from beginning to end. And that is The Truants by Kate Weinberg. This is one that Alice Slater has been talking about and really enjoyed. I had a feeling she would. I'm, even though there's lots of kind of parallels apparently with Donna Tartt's The Secret History, which you guys may remember, not a fan. Despite that, I'm quite interested in this one and it sounds like kind of like a bit of a romp and just a nice read. Maybe not nice, maybe nice isn't the word. I don't know. All of the energy, I'm sorry. I have also bought a load of books on Kindle, but to be honest with you, I can't remember which ones and when I bought them, so that's a secret. I have also got Waiting For Me To Collect at the bookshop, I'm gonna include it in this one, a copy of Sugarbane by Stuart Douglas, winner of the Booker Prize, which I had a feeling it would win and I think possibly everybody did have a feeling it would win, so I'm not special. To be honest with you, it was the only one on the shortlist that I was probably going to get to sooner rather than later anyway. I sound like I'm going like, I was going to read it anyway, but I was. So I'm going to pick up a copy of that and get reading that soon. So that's a load of books that I bought. That's a load of like word vomit coming out of my mouth. Never change. Are you going to be joining in with Cozy Reading Night tomorrow night, Friday, Friday the 4th of December, Cozy Reading Night, 7 till 10 p.m. Wonderful Lauren and the Books, hosting it, because it's brilliant. She's brilliant. It's brilliant. Read all the books. If you are joining on all the hashtags on Twitter and Instagram and what not, it's gonna be fun. I hope you're all keeping safe and well and taking care of your mental health in these weird old ass times. I can't make any promises, but I'm hoping that the next video I film, I will not have had six cups of coffee and be really excited and really quite manic and hyper. Have a little chat with me in the comments below about any of the books that I have mentioned or any of the other verbal diarrhea that has happened. You know, just have a chat. I'm here. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!